Hey there, lads and lassies. I hope you guys are doing beautifully today. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to Duncan Rumpa. Trigger happy havoc, guys. So, just to briefly recap the last episode, which um, this time I believe will be brief because uh, there's not really too much to say about it. I mean, well, we d we finally, at the beginning of the episode, we finally rediscovered uh, where uh, Taka and Hifumi's bodies were and we begun our investigation into their murders. We received Monokuma file number three, which stated how they were murdered and we went around gathering all the clues that we could find for our truth bullets. Um, we also talked to everyone that we could Um so there's been a few clues found, so we've got quite a lot of evidence and stuff, but, um, and I'll just show you on the screen, actually, while we're talking about it. So in the truth bullets, we've got the blue towel, the dolly, Hifumi's glasses that were cleaned and dirty at different times, the spotless hammer, which appeared to be washed, the repository door handle, well, the door lock, which appears to only lock from the inside. So that's interesting. Equipment room bloodstain, so that was the dolly tracks. Hifumi's cleaning cloth, it's clearly Hifumi's, although no one seems to be pointing out that it's his, but it clearly is his. Celeste account that um, her and Aoi only went away for like a couple of minutes to the bathroom, and that's when Hifumi's body disappeared. Um, Yashihiro's message to meet in the dining hall is neat writing. The Robo Justice blueprints with some different writing. Um, the costume that kind of keeps you prisoner and it, it's locked kind of thing and also you can't apparently see the feet or bend at the waist more than 90 degrees so that really hinders your movement um Ta uh, kiyotaka's broken wristwatch broken at 6 a.m is what we deduced with Ki uh, kyoko so kiyotaka was murdered around 6 a.m in the morning so he technically broke the nighttime rules because he was up before daytime hours um, and also Kiyotaka's scrap of paper and the note Hifumi had. So it kind of suggests that those two had an encounter at some point before they were murdered, but we don't know. And also the e-handbook e appears to be a clue in this case. Um, doesn't appear to be that they're exactly related to the murders, but they may have played a part in some of the evidence. So, uh, that's that. Um, the report card still states Kiyotaka and Hifumi, like, alive kind of thing, but they'll obviously turn to dead uh, by the end of the trial, I guess. Um, regulations. I'm trying to remember. Did we get a new one added? Lunar E. Hematona students are prohibited. The guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people during any single killing game. So at the moment, we haven't confirmed it, but we may be just looking for one killer who's killed two people. Or it could be... I suppose there's the possibility that we've got two P killers. One kill... They killed... One killed another. Um, but... Only one... But I don't think that's the case, though, because in terms of an accomplice... The accomplice has no real merit for helping someone kill someone because only the blackened, the actual one who does the killing, would graduate. So there's no benefit. So accomplices are unlikely, but we can't completely rule them out. So I think there's more to this case than meets the eye, guys. So hopefully we'll find out more in the trial. So basically, uh, we've got all the clues we can. Monokuma has summoned us to the Red Room for the court trial. So in terms of the people I have suspicions of... Uh, I honestly don't know who's done it in this one. Um, there is quite a lot. We suspect more people in this one than we believe innocence, or that at least that's in my opinion anyway, guys. Um, obviously, Makoto, us, we didn't do it. But the ones that I believe are also innocent are Byakia, strangely Toko slash genocide Jill. I don't believe that she's involved in this case. And I believe Aoi is, is innocent. Um, he, and then the suspects, Hiro, there's definitely evidence against him. Um, Sakura, she could potentially be the right size to fit in the Robo Justice suit. So that's the only reason I have suspicions at the moment about her. I'm actually having to think about who's still freaking alive. Let me just go back to the report cards. Um, so Yashihiro's suspicious. Ah, well, Kyoko, 
Kyoko, I am a little suspicious of because she disappeared for half the investigation time and searching the bodies, and she won't give us a reason why she was gone. So she's a bit suspicious, and also Byakia suspects that she might be the sp a spy working for Monokuma, which we don't know yet. We must find some evidence about that or something. Um, another thing that also hasn't been solved in this case is what happened to... Um, Chihiro's laptop with the AI alter ego. Uh, we still haven't found that yet, so maybe we'll learn it, the, tr the fate of it during the trial. So Aoi, I think she's innocent. Toko, I think in this case she's innocent because she kills in certain ways as genocide Jill. Well, okay, I say genocide Jill is innocent. Toko, I guess we have to slightly suspect. Celeste. Now, Celeste... I have my suspicions over Celeste as well because during this investigation and up to the times of the murders, she was leading us um, up, up all the floors saying that she spotted the suspect, but we didn't, all we found were the bodies, no suspect. So I have my suspicions of what she's telling us. So the only ones I can say, I think for sure, that aren't involved are Mako and Biakia and um, Toko slash Genocide Jill and Aoi and um, everyone else, there is some suspicion. So anyway, that's enough rabbiting on by me. Let us begin Chapter Three's class trial, Double Murder of Kiyotaka and Hifumi. Oh, it's so weird coming back to this lift room every time and less and less people show up. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation and they were gathered by the red door. God, so is everyone here? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there was ten and two were murdered. So yep, everyone is present. Only eight left. And as soon as we were all there... Monokuma! Holy crap, it's the first time we've come across more than one Monokuma. He did confirm near the beginning of the game when pretty much everyone else, everyone was alive, that there is more than one of him. Hello, hello, hello. He's multiplied. Wrong. No, not multiplication. It just looks that way because of an illusion. Uh, okay. I'm moving so fast it only looks like I've multiplied. Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? Um, you both look pretty much the same, so no. Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy, you're, you're not playing along. Along, along. We're not here to play with you. Okay, okay, fine. If everyone's here and ready to go, please board the pain. Please board the pain train. Uh, elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay then, shall we? <laughs> please. Yeah, he's he's nervous because everyone suspects him right now. But so, Hiro, you haven't been very vocal in many of the previous trials. You definitely have to be in this one if you are indeed innocent. Uh, hold on, I'm not mentally prepared yet. What the heck? He'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, Hiro. You're gonna pay for your sins. What the heck? Yeah, but everyone still be believes that he did it. I told you already, I didn't do it. For serious. That reminds me, did you ever find the other costume? Or the note? Um, well, no, but yeah, you fucked. How unfortunate that it would seem we have our culprit. Uh, surely they're not going to go to vote immediately. Hey. This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first. Then the story can really begin. Yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to... I have to... do it. I can't let whoever killed Hifumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who's still alive. And for the two that lost their lives. Hifumi. Taka. The one who killed Hifumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... 
Someone right here. Apparently so. It wasn't me. You gotta believe me. <laughs> Come on, Big Mac. Let's do it. Oh my. What do you mean, do it? It's a mess. <laughs> it would appear the culprit has been confirmed. This trial will be over in no time. Mm, she sounds confident. Makes me a little suspicious. Just the worst. Let's hurry up and go so we can make him pay for his crimes. I don't like Monaco's carefree attitude. Were you listening? Wait till we get to the courtroom to begin your arguing. Okay, guys, let's do it. Let's begin the trial. I took one last deep breath and exhaled slowly. I began to walk toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard, Going down. The doors closed on the run, and the steel box began to move. Oh my god, that is so eerie, kind of creepy, and a little bit ominous that the, so many people are gone. So many people are not on the elevator anymore. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. There was no going back. Until we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. The elevator door slid open, opening up onto a cruel fate. Huh? Let's change the courtroom again. <laughs> when I see all of you gathered together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. Just the worst. Only because of you. Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? What, what? What, what? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute! Oh, fuck you, Monokuma. Come on. Stop beefing around and begin the trial. Yeah. Don't rush me. Of course I'm gonna start it. Uh oh, his eyes, be his red lightning scar eyes beaming. Watch out, he's gonna in inflict the showering gun. I would never be like, stay tuned for the action packed class trial after this commercial break. You asshole. He's clearly telling us that this is being broadcast. Yeah. I never hold out on you like that. Okay, let's begin. Get to your assigned seats. And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly faith. A deadly class trial. Oh yes, please. Um, I'm actually going to save over that slot because it will only save just outside the trial room because I'm running out of save slots. And I don't really want to save over the beginning yet. Okay, so open the e-handbook. I've kind of went through the truth bullets with you guys, so I don't think we really need to go through them again. Um, I don't think there's really any information in here that's going to... Oh, now they're confirmed dead. Um, I didn't talk to Kiyotaka. Um, if for me, it's ultimate fanfic where it's my job to spread the gospel fanfic and start going to cons, giving lectures on the power of fanfic. I don't think there's anything here that'll tell us much. He's a 20% success rate right here. I mean, maybe him being useless at clairvoyance will actually save his life, maybe. Um, no, there's not really much information here. Okay, guys, let's set the skills and then begin the trial. So I have available 17 points. So I got skill loss and thought. Increases the time limit for each phase. Effective during the class trial costs three skill points. Okay. So I've got a robot jock already. Increases your truth bullet rate of fire. Effective during the non-stop debate and the bullet time final battle. I want to keep that. Uh, melodious voice increases damage to the opponent when a statement is destroyed. Effective during the bullet time battle is three. So handiwork allows you to reload two bullets at once. 
effective during the bullet time battle, costs four. That's fine. And didn't the other one just cost three skill bullets? So I can equip all the skills I have right now for maximum points. Let's just do that then. Okay, let's begin the trial. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. And I just noticed that just as we were looking at the, the student, remaining students in the seats, all the ones around Makoto now are dead. Just picture frames. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Now then, to begin with... Oh yeah, in the last trial, Monokuma began the trial by putting us on the subject. What's he gonna say now? We already know who did it! No, don't you even dare trigger the vote now. Was that? It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found him in that suit. Hmm. You're all immediately jumping to conclusions before we even look at the evidence. Don't try and deny it! You killed them! I didn't! Someone knocked me out! I, I was asleep the whole time! I don't know anything about it! Hmm. Shut your murdering mouth! Murderer! Wow, that's genocide Jill saying that. Who are you calling a murderer? <laughs> yes, very true. I am sorry to say, Hero, but we do have evidence. Okay. Blueprint for the suit. Mm hmm. Parts we assume were used to build it. Yeah. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. Yeah, very true. But have you ever considered the point that it might have been planted there? It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. Mm. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Dude, you need to have a backbone at this point if you're gonna successfully defend yourself. Is Hero really the killer? Or... Before anything else, we have to make that clear. Begin! So we've got Yoshihiro's message, okay. So I know roughly what we're looking for. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true, it's a conspiracy! Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! Wait, what? I mean, looking at the blueprints, the handwriting is off nicely. But right here's handwriting is. Oh, right, it says Everything for blueprints. Found in your room. Yeah, that's fine. The blueprints, the suit parts. No, it's wrong. Was that one? That wasn't so clear. This means the trials are getting harder. Are we harder. sure Hero really made those blueprints? Mm hmm. What do you mean? Yep. Well, take a look at this. Mm hmm. Let's do this, Makoto. Super Detective Makoto. It's the note that Hero wrote, asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. Mm hmm. The handwriting's obviously different, wouldn't you say? When you compare it to the blueprints, there's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Correct, Kyoko. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. Possible. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Yeah. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. He is a dumbass. So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think you're the culprit? Yeah, I think we are. And he is not the only one. I think Hero is innocent as well. Even Byakuya agrees with us. Holy shit. Then who was in that robo-justice suit? Well, I think it was Hero, but... Well, at least in the locker anyway. Is it like Hero said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? Hmm... 
the suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Oh, do you know? Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. We don't have the evidence to say exactly who it was yet, I don't think. And of course he passes it off to me, <laughs> yes. Who was in the Robo Justice suit? Mm, don't think we have evidence to prove exactly who it was. The suspicious individual in question, the one that must have been in the suit. What? Oh, you've got to be freaking kidding me. Uh, well, the only evidence we've got is well, Hina, how oh, he tried the suit on it, clearly didn't fit her. So it can't be Hina. I can't say the fucking Illuminati. <laughs> uh, well, the only evidence we've got to say is it was definitely Hero in the suit, but was it him that killed them? That's the question. I, got I guess that's the right answer. Other than Hero. I can't think of anyone else it could have been. We don't have any evidence to suggest otherwise. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit. And we never found any kind of second suit. Mm hmm. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. Mm hmm. That doesn't make any sense. You just said Hero didn't do it. It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit. But he's not the culprit. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. Thank you, Byakuya, for backing us up. You're not so much of an asshole this time. What? Now that's a bold assumption! Mm -hmm. Well, we've got evidence to prove it. I mean, it's more like an imprisonment, imprisonment tool. And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that... You're gonna shove it on me again, aren't you? There's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Okay, what's that? Hey, stop trying to boss us around! Well, usually the people in charge of these trials is either Makoto, Kyoko, or Byakuya. It's pretty clear. All things have a proper order. Mm -hmm. Plus, Byakuya wants to make this interesting. So, what is it? What needs to be clarified? Okay. We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Yeah. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? Mm-hmm. The things that we used to move Taka's body, they must have been... So I've got to present two things. Well, this first. I got it. There's still one more thing. So you used to move Taka's body, there must have been the tarp. I got it. They were a dolly and a tarp, right? Mm-hmm. Huh? He doesn't seem happy with that. What's with the attitude? So let's see if I can explain. Okay. Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. Correct. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. Correct. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. Yep. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Yes. Okay, that explains the tarp and the dolly. Really? Transport. Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. Mm -hmm. But when the body disappeared, so did the doll. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the doll. Yeah. In other words, you think they use the dolly to move the body, am I right? Yeah. But are you sure you are not mistaken? Why would we be mistaken, Celeste? 
Again, Celeste is one of my prime suspects. I'm suspicious of her in this one. Um, obviously, we still have to see, be suspicious of Hero, but Celeste is a little bit acting a bit odd. Okay, well, if you've got something to counteract. Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? Okay. That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. Right. It would be very strange indeed. Discovery had made its way to the equipment room. But it's not impossible, it's on wheels. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along and you simply didn't realize it? raised an objection how do you respond okay there is no shame in being wrong and nobody expects much from you anyway. you bitch hmm yeah he's the ultimate lucky student but he's not like super talented like some of the others but also that is definitely a retort to trying to avoid the issue and hey, excuse me i have solved two trials so far so fuck you we have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. What? Wow. I never had anyone sound so nice while being so mean. But maybe I can change her mind. If I can just explain to them why the dolly must have been moved from the equipment room to the repository. The bloodstained wheels, I guess. Oh my... Oh, bullet time pal. We're getting to a BTB already. Oh, okay. A new element's been added to bullet time battles. Would you like to hear more? Yes. Let's talk about reloading. Oh, no. Starting with this next bullet time battle, we're going to add one more ingredient to the recipe. Oh, fabulous. Is it going to make it more delicious? On the bottom of the screen, underneath the tempo market, you'll see your ammo count. Okay. Up until now, there hasn't really been a limit on how you destroy your opponent's statements, but now the freaking is great. From now on, just locking on and pressing the Y button won't be enough to handle them. That will cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements, no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the X button, so it's the triangle button to shoot. And uh, these are Xbox controls, so it's the square button on the PS4. Okay. Okay. Just like locking on, you'll have to pass the... You have to press the square button in time with the tempo marker. Oh boy. Basically, just remember that the square button now has a function along with the A and Y button. Fucking hell. You will automatically reload at the start of fever time. Oh yeah, how do... Um, no, no, auto. Uh, uh, this what? button. You will automatically reload at the start of fever time and your ammo will not decrease. Oh, but if your action to is set to gentle, you won't have to reload at all. Well, mine's set to kind. In which case, you can ignore everything I just said. Well then, good luck with the Great. Right. So, straight into a BTB? You have it wrong! I cannot agree! You are a fool! So pathetic! Life will get to nowhere! You don't want to agree with you! Trials officially adjourned. Now it's time to reveal who's the blackened. <laughs> well, that's a loss. It would appear that the one with the most folks is Makuro. Well, Makuro is not the blackened. Too bad. So the real clickers graduate. Congratulations to them. I think that's a typo. On the other hand, everyone else must now be punished. 
is this real? Yeah, I'll give another shot because I, I pressed the wrong fucking buttons. It's so hard when it gives you Xbox controllers, controllers, and I've got a PS4. Asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. Mm -hmm. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. Yeah. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. <laughs> oh. Jeez, does Flash really hate me that much? Well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Okay, so is that my only BTB, or is there going to be another one come up if we prove who did it? Yeah, it's the subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then what kind of robot is it? There isn't a robot involved, Hina. I'm not sure that really matters. Thank you, Sakura. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. Are you going to explain it, or are you going to make me do it? If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. Yeah. So the robot couldn't move, uh, look, check its feet, or bend down below 90 degrees. If I look at how the body was moving, it'll be clear why the person in the suit couldn't have done it. What does he mean by that? Because I knew that. The robot just cost you, yeah. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. Mm -hmm. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the culprit wrapped the body in the car. Then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Okay. Well, yeah. But even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. No, it's wrong. There we go. You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. Mm hmm. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? Exactly. What do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together. Remember? I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention... You totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. Huh. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Mm -hmm. Well... What's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? Possibly. When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible! Not that I can say for sure myself. Okay. 
On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? Yeah, but you wouldn't really have a lot of time, but also there's the latch. There's absolutely no chance that the costume was taken off just to move the body because... Uh, once it's on, you can never take it off. Well, that's not necessary. You can't take it off by yourself. That's correct. I got it. I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help. Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? I didn't make the stupid friggin' thing. There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Mm hmm Then... you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up? Nope. Of course I wasn't making it up. If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Mm. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So, it's really, really true that Robo Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? Yeah, sorry. To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? Yeah. No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? Mm-hmm. You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? That doesn't mean he's necessarily the killer, though. If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? But she has a point. Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? How did you get hurt? That guy hit me. What guy? Robo Justice. Eh, uh, that's what I decided to call him just now. So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. Hmm. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. Hmm. Hold on a second! It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Yep. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Well, until Monokuma gets bored. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Yes, that's what we've done in all the previous trials. Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Okay. Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. Use the clues that Kyoko helped us find, obviously. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I thank you, Jill. I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Yep. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. Oh. All right, then. Let's take another look back at what happened. Okay, we're going to another argument. I suppose we could start with this morning. Okay. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. Mm -hmm. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up, so we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. Okay, that was around 8 a.m. The times, the times in this guys are definitely going to be significant. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Mm -hmm. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. Mm -hmm. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. Mm -hmm. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after seven. Okay. That 
was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. Okay. As it turns out, it was Robo Justice. Okay. It also soon became clear that this same Robo Justice had abducted Yifumi. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. Mm -hmm. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. This is all true so far. But not long after leaving the nurse's office. What's wrong? I saw a shadow, something moving around at the top of the stairs. When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. Mm -hmm. And soon after that, I saw someone moving around on the third floor. And I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. Mm -hmm. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I, I saw him, that strange costume man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. And then... That? Yeah! Huh? Well, what was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been... Ifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office. Mm -hmm. While Sakura, Yakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. Mm -hmm. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. Yeah. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us and she told us something very surprising. Hifumi's body has disappeared. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. Notice the theme here, guys? Which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. Yeah. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Mm hmm Okay, well, if that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. That's what I was thinking. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Okay. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. The contradictions hidden in what happened to Taka. In order to uncover the truth of this case, I have to find them, no matter what. Here we go. It's time of death, I guess. Oh no, the file, okay. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because
Oh. Come on, come on, just give me that. Like that. Makes me think something weird is going on. Oopsie. God, I have to be careful. My influence is going down. I wonder if he died before he came, or perhaps it was after. We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3, while Taka's death came from a swing of Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. Oh, I know it's one of these. I need to shoot. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before he boomed, or perhaps it was after. We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the just. No, it's wrong. Hold on. There's no reason to assume that the hammers were used in the same order as their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, but in reality, Taka was killed before he flew me? <laughs> okay then, let's see the proof. Evidence the proof Taka was killed before he made the watch. Something in relation to what time he must have died. Oh, it's Hangman's Gambit time, okay. Uh, must be watch. Oh, wrist watch, wrist watch. Uh, where's I? S. Come on, Dad. Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around 7. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. Mm -hmm. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around six, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Yeah. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. Yeah. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder. But all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. Are we certain about that? Hmm. Huh? What, what was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been... Hifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. When we heard Hifumi screaming, we were all together. Except for Hiro and Kyoko. Uh-oh. But Hiro was stuck in the suit. 
Then we all ran down to the nurse's office, and that's where we found his body. Hmm. I'm thinking something, but I'm not going to say it, because it sounds a bit far-fetched right now. That's totally true. We're all in the clear. Okay. Well, we actually don't know what you and Byaki were doing. Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! That's actually a good thing idea, a good way of reason, but we've got no evidence that they have tape recorders. If that's true, where's the tape? Correct. I don't know. This guy's such an idiot. Don't just go making stuff up! Anyway, we all have rock-solid alibis for when we heard he fully scream. Yeah. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. Mm. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. Okay. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Tina and I were in the bathroom together while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then, there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. Okay. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Right. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time. Yeah, she was. Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then. Yeah, but it's not the way she kills. Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. That's true. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Besides, I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. Mm. So we've reached an impasse. Possibly the most impossible. A logical reason for it, I guess. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most certainly could have done those things. True. Mm. So what now, Kyoko? Mm-hmm. For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. Okay. You dodged the question a bit, but okay. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. Okay. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. Very true. Because it did move floors within minutes. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said... We could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. So then... Uh, so then the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time? It would seem so. His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. Mm -hmm. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? Is impossible. Oh man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well... What if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? I think I know what she's thinking. I think she's thinking the same thing as me, but let's let's find out. What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Hifumi moved himself. He wasn't dead at that point, which would tie in with how he died in Aoi's arms, technically. Huh? The dead body mo moved on its own? Not because he wasn't dead yet. No! Not another... No! Run, Scoob! I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is... Mm -hmm. We thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality he was still alive. Yeah, and we have the evidence to prove that as well. His glasses were cleaned in order for him to see. Alive? Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? Yeah. But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. 
not true, Ari. Perhaps he was simply playing there. That it isn't possible. Hmm. The idea that he from me was still alive. Is it really possible? Yes! Watch, okay. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? It was the announcement for Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Alright, I need to change the bullet and I know which one it is. So it's not this bullet, this is bullshit. When we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive. No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. How's that not right? What's that have to do with what I said? Or do you just not know what you're doing? Shoot. Oh shit. Oh, I can't make one. I can't make another mistake. Oh, shit. I fucked up. Yeah, I failed. I refuse to give up yet. This is probably easier than I think it is. Um, it's got to be more swatch. I can't change the. I can't cycle through any of my bullets. I think I get it now. Signal someone else's discovery. I'm dumb. I'm an idiot. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body opened back. No! There we go. Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Nope. Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. Yeah. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Yeah. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. He'll deny that. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. You dick. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. So when we first discovered Hifumi's body, there was three of us, and when we first discovered Taka's body, there was Toko, Sakura, and Mbiaki. Okay. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. <laughs> no, actually, that was plenty. Okay. He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time, which means... Yeah. Even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. Ah, uh, but he did make another announcement there. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? That confirms it. Huh? Later on? 
Oh yeah, she was passed out. Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. Second body discovery announcement. First time played was when we found each body in the nest is obviously in the equipment room. The second time was when they were in the repository. I got it! We heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. Yeah. Ding dong, bing dong, ding dong. The body has been discovered. After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. It didn't seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually still alive. He discovered for the first well, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Yep. Meaning he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. Correct. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. His tissue. Oh, dear. Do you think we're gonna play dead? That'd be incredible! Well, yes, but that doesn't, that's not enough. That is the worst logic I have ever heard. <laughs> but honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Oh, yes, there is, Celeste. Okay, then. Let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. I think we pretty much know who did it, or who was at least involved. There has to be proof that shows Hifumi was still alive. We'll have to find it and show it to everyone. Yeah, and we've got it. Should be the glass, the cleaning cloth. Yeah, or his glass as well. So here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. Yeah. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. Mm -hmm. But when you compare his body before being moved and his Here body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable oh, difference. Shit. Okay, it's the next line. Shoot. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. No, that's wrong. In fact, there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office and the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. Yeah. But when we found him again later in the repository, mm -hmm. they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. Yeah, we still found the trash can in the nurse's office. It was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses clean. Mm -hmm. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? Yep. And whose digital camera was it? Hifumi's, of course. Mm -hmm. The character was... Princess Pebbles. From 
demon angel pretty pudgy princess has been. I highly doubt anyone but the queen would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... The Akira Hisumi and Toko. I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage <laughs> like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belongs to you, food. Mmm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? Put the pieces together here. What I'm saying is... The blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. So he could see in order to use his location. Even if that is true, he does not mean he wipes the blood off himself. True. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. And it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, it's true. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? Yeah. But then, if he was just pretending to be dead, yeah, are you going to get to the point of why? What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? It could be paint. The fridge in the nurse's office contains oh, packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was going to play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere! was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. Hifumi. The one who moved Taka's body was... I got it! It could only have been Hifumi. Yep. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. Yeah. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. Because he was inside. The door was locked? Yeah. Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Mm hmm which means when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. Yeah. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. Yeah, correct. He convinced us all he was dead. And when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. Mm-hmm. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. Oh, boy. An accomplice. But that means he took part in the murders. Yeah. I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? Yep. There's more? Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? Yeah. The thing that hit him is stuff from Taka, could it be? This one? Yeah. You're talking about the note Kifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? Oh my. Mm. Yes, his pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. 
Take a look at what the note says. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. The time of Kiyotaka's death. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Hey? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. Mm-hmm. the same? Well... You just clearly stated the, the details that are different. In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hero. Yeah. And that person could only have been... Taka. I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Mm-hmm. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! Uh, okay, Joe, what do you want to say? I don't really understand what's going on, but Kibumi had that letter, right? Oh, right, okay. We've got the evidence to say it was snatched off of Taka. So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Happy! Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Happy is Kibumi. Right? Sorry guys, it's just a bit late at night. I keep thinking I'm hearing noises, but it's just the music in the game, so that's why I'm just moving my headphones. Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? Oh shit, she's gonna kill you. Nah, she doesn't kill girls. Man, Jensen like Jack is seriously scary, but still. I can't let her get to me. Wait, is this another bullet time battle? No. Oh no, it's just he's getting freaked out now. Absolutely is a connection. What? what the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. You've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that... No further objections! <laughs> then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. Mm-hmm. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. Well, it was the perfect message to get you as well out of there, wasn't it? But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Oh, we have the evidence. Jumping out his pants, no less! Most likely, Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Mm hmm He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. Proof that Hifumi stole the note from Taka, it was torn piece. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There is only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving me 
behind only one small scrap. Right. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yep. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. Mm -hmm. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive. I have nothing more to say about him. I'm never relying on him again in these cases at all. He's dead. We've had that confirmed. And no, he's an accomplice. Sorry. No. When we found him in the repository, Ifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Ifumi? It's pretty obvious what happened. Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. I think I know, but I'll wait till they reveal it. He was killed in the repository. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. Mm -hmm. So he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. Not after Taka's body vanished. Yes, but after, but before we found it. Yes. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. Yeah. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus. Ooh. Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. Right, I'll give you a chance, but if you say something idiotic, then I'm not relying on you at all. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! Uh, oh, well, I suppose we haven't got round to the hammers yet. A weapon? Yeah, because, I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? Oh, actually, he has made a good point. There weren't any hammers apart from the ones hanging on the wall, and one of them was washed. <sighs> so if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. He actually made sense. Hell yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. Yeah. He's right though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. And the keyword there is similar, not the same. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. Hmm. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Hmm. Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? Yeah. I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? No. So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? The weapon that was actually used to kill Hifumi. The whole picture surrounding this case won't become plain until we figure that out. So I have to find the truth. Be the other hammer that was washed. was used to kill Hifumi. Was it Justice Hammer 3? Nope. Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. 
How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Seriously, I don't have a serious faith right now. Oh god. What was used to kill Ifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the justice. No, Break. The murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But seriously, a different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill the food. Now. All the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. Mm -hmm. I think whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. Yeah. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma Files' note about the wounds being similar. Mm -hmm. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. Whoever did that is the true killer. The one who me was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Okay. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. Yeah, that's a good point. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? There's one possibility, though, that the cult, the real murderer, did, agreed with here for me to share the money. We did talk about how there wouldn't be any reason for anyone to work together. At least that's what we thought at first, but... The reward money, is that one of the options? Oh no, it's still the hammer, okay. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together at this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there is one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Would you say there's no chance two people work together on this? But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true. No, it's wrong. Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, 
If only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Ah, so risk versus reward benefit? So if there's more than one person involved, which there appears to be evidence too, then he soon killed one person and then the other person killed the other. The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. So if someone killed Hifumi in order to graduate, but Hifumi killed Taku, I guess? There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. Mm -hmm. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. Yep. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. Yeah. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. Mm -hmm. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. Mm -hmm. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies by creating one seamless set of circumstances. They made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. Mm -hmm. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. That's just awful! How could anyone be so cruel? Hmm. For the money, maybe? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems odd. Hmm. The effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. That was the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed the fact, that fact from the very beginning. Which is why she said not to look at this as a series of connected events but entirely separate incidents. Kyoko really is amazing, although... When you think about it, she's almost too amazing. Hmm, that's what I've been thinking. Like, it's almost unnatural how good she is at this. I understand how an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Yafumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now! The true killer manipulated Yafumi to carry out a number of actions, and in the end, murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case is unfolded, when you consider all that, there's really only one person who seems to fit. Interesting. But guys, I think it's pretty obvious. The only person that could have been manip pulling his strings, who we've clearly seen kind of had a master-servant relationship with Hifumi, but also is clearly the one that's been controlling everyone's moves throughout the incidents and moving up between the floors and stuff, it has to be Celeste. Here's my answer. It was Celeste. Mm-hmm. Ah, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? Yes, unless you can counter it. <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. Uh-oh. A joke? I wonder. Yeah, you don't look so comfortable now, Celeste. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. I guess that is what we're saying, yes. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him... Is? That I would go within ten feet of that shit brain that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! And I think we have it confirmed. to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned
times so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. What is it that only if and slice had in common? And encountering this suspicious individual. I got it! The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Shush, the adults are talking now. Oh shit. Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. Mm -hmm. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Yeah. Everything they told us was a lie? Yeah, pretty much, although they did trap Hiro in the costume. I guess. After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? Mm hmm And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? I saw a shadow. Something moving around on the top of the stairs. We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costume man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, mm -hmm. it was time for her partner to get to work. Yeah. Huh? Wait, what was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been... Ifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. It was to get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? Correct. In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Mm -hmm. Then why did we split into two groups? I'll lead the hunting party. That seems much more interesting. Very well, then Makoto and Hina, you come with me to the nurse's office. I will leave the capture of the suspicious individual to Toko, Byakuya, and Sakura. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on, Was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? Uh. It was your way of telling him we are on the third floor. Everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? We'll figure it out. Not much to say, Celeste. I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. <laughs> I certainly was not expecting this. I did not imagine that Hifumi would be murdered. Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I don't believe it. Everything, the whole thing was one big act. Hina. You were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Huh, okay. Wait, then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Wow. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, we die. 
I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it. But looking back, I can say that that one little slip up was your undoing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. We're all going to die here. We're going to die, just like those guys dies. Guys, those guys. I remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Because both here for me and... I would then not for me. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Right. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. You fucked, Celeste. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. <sighs> you hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Yakia said that Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. But what is he alluding to? We found number three. All I said was they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. <laughs> all I said was, they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it, what was so strange about Celeste's comment? All I said was, they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? When she said that, she could she only have known about her theories that that really was strange. What she said it was. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. I need to take Biakia's statement and put it into those guys. That's what I need to do. I'm such a fucking moron. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? All I said was... We must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Bingo. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. Yeah. 
When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? Got yeah. How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. You're fucked. <laughs> you all have such vivid imaginations. You know that? Oh my god, really? She's still denying it? The evidence is absolute, Celeste. You're fucked. Are you gonna do another BTB? Imaginations. You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Okay. Then what about the picture I took? We could have paused for it. How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? Hmm. It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? Okay. So let's put the suit on. And then, then she used the camera's timer to, to set up the picture. Oh, you're sounding nervous. Quickly forgotten. You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Hmm. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. How would you know that? In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. Hmm. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? I guess not. Right, lay, lay on his cubicle. What do you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. Mm. If Hifumi was your assailant, he could have just paused it as if he was in trouble. No, there is no other explanation. Oh, I'm sure Kyoko's going to give you one. Other... Explanations. If it wasn't a picture of the suspect dragging here for me away, the only other possibility is if me is dragging the suspect away. I got it. It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. Mm -hmm. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. Ah, fuck you. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. Yeah. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing... is utterly impossible. Okay, now what do you say, Celeste? Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous. All right, this is another BCB coming. Is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate Oof. you. Okay, then go for it. It's the last thing she can prove that there's no way Hifumi was dragging the suspect away. Is that really possible? Suit after I passed out. Then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. 
if the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. Raise a few. Fumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up. No, it's wrong. No. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Mm -hmm. Because that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. You totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. No, it was so. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. <laughs> it's a shame though, I kind of like Celeste, but she's a murdering bitch. Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? Yeah. Isn't 
that a convenient explanation? Mm. No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So he knew he was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to, and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. Oh, that's true. <gasps> what did you just say? Hmm. To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit. Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather! Yasuhiro is a loser's name! Do I look like a loser to you? Hmm. Well, do I? You look like you're losing your trial case right now. What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Celeste still won't give up, so then. I have to do something to make her accept it. Handbook. Handbook the real name. trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name, it would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me, no, Three handbook. That's it. The handbook. What? Any time you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. When you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. So all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Well, there you go. Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. You're kind of backed into a corner now, Celeste. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because... 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 Uh-oh. Until the game's over, you never know what might happen. The ultimate gambler. Fine, then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning. And shed light on all your cards. Okay, here we go, the final. And that'll bring everything to an end. The climax. So we have Hif this must be Hifumi's room where they're drawing up their plans. So I suspect at this moment it's Celeste. So in this case, how did the killer recruit their accomplice? Was it seduction? Quite possibly. Oh yeah, he 
this into 2D, so yeah, it might be that he got given the poster. He's got posters. That's right. And it shows a poster that the, the suspect's pointing at it. Ah, okay, I think that's it. Uh, what time did the killers call their victim to the wreck room? It was 1 a.m. There we go. Okay. So, 1 a.m. Yes, here comes to the wreck room where he's in the end. Our suspect is. Uh, who was it? The killer's son first. It was Kiyotaka.
killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was... Oh shit, I've got to run away off the back. No reason why I needed to reach that was the case. As the killer recruited their accomplice was its seduction. Must be that one then. Has to be that one. Here's exactly what happened. Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was. Oh no, don't tell me. No, it's not. It's a cop. Okay. Boom. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. Mm hmm. Convince someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hero. The murderous duo intended to pass Hero off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the Robo Justice suit. Positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him, while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. Mm. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. Okay, it does like 10 to 6. It's and just a way to At 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. Mm -hmm. And that's where Ifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason hammer number four was used was to create confusion about the order of the crime. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the record. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack story. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Yifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. Mm -hmm. He fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. But... While we did that, he left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. Justice Hammer 3 and turn the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back, and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. Taka's 
body in a tarp and use the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappear. But even Yifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Hmm. Their plan all along was to kill Yifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... charge as if you're my private instructor I Celestia Ludenberg actually no Taiko Yasuhiro is fine oh she said her name Taiko? so you finally accepted it I'm the kind of person once I've lost I don't like things to drag on Interesting. So there we go. We have our verdict. I doubt I'm getting any in this trial. Oh, I did get any. Oh, shit. I failed so many times. Cool. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or... No, I suppose this is the end, isn't it? Mm, yeah, for you, I guess so. Hmm. Hmm. Wait a second, what are you doing? It is indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote, okay? Okay. If you would, please locate your lever and cast your vote. Okay. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? Okay. Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? I think we know. It's basically a formality at this point, but once again, you're totally correct. The black in this time, the true killer who devised the whole stinking scheme was... <laughs> Celestia Ludenberg, or more precisely, Taiko Yashihiro! Honestly. I lost. Well, that sucks. I guess trying to work with someone else was a mistake, after all. Ifumi's ineptitude was beyond all my calculations. I knew. So you really did approach Ifumi with this plan. But how did you get him to agree? I can't imagine he would have happily agreed to commit murder. Hm. I'm sure she relied on her speciality. Lying. <laughs> my speciality? Don't make me laugh. I didn't have to lie to get him to agree. So then. Then did you use... You know... I knew you'd figure it out, Kyoko. You're absolutely right. To get here for me to act as my accomplice, I used her, the AI. For everyone who's still left, I'll avoid mentioning it by name, but it was the one thing here for me and Taka were both super into. Does she mean? 
Is she talking about Alter Ego? Say what? Uh-oh, Monokuma. Yeah, don't tell Monokuma. What? What, what, what? What are you talking about? Just a second. Don't interrupt. We're in the middle of a very important conversation here. I'm totally out of the loop. As usual. How sad. In other words... Then you're the one that stole it. Indeed. That's right. And you used it to drag Hifumi into the plan you'd come up with. <laughs> right, again. Last night, after we had our meeting about how it disappeared, I paid Hifumi a little visit. Um... Oh, wow, we get a look at Hifumi's room. Wow, it is definitely full of anime stuff and figurines. Oh, um, what are you doing here? Actually, I was hoping I could talk to you alone. It is about what was stolen. I know who did it. What? Are you okay with this? It was Taka. He stole it. Yeah. What? So then... And I have proof. Would you like to see it? As it turned out, I found a use for the digital camera. I'd taken you-know-what to Taka's room earlier and took pictures of it there. Oh, so she framed it all lied to him from the very beginning. I deleted the picture as soon as I'd shown it to him for me, of course. So it was him. But how did he do it? She was supposed to yell if either of us got close to her. <sighs> you are correct. Which is why Taka forced me to steal it. Oh, right, of course. Say what? As for me... Please forgive me. He... He threatened me. Oh. He, he um... did? As for me... He came to my room last night unannounced, and then it's hard for me to even say he abused me. Oh, you bitch. What? And he he took pictures. He said if I did not do as he asked, he would show them to everyone. So I I had no choice. That, that's a crime. An absolute crime. He... I mean... I knew he'd gone a little crazy, but I never imagined he would would go that far. <laughs> it was amazing how completely he bought it. <laughs> I can't express how enjoyable that was. Oh, you bitch. I'm about to say something I've never said before in my life. Completely unforgivable. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to f f fucking kill him. Most unfortunate. Wait, please. If you go now, you will be playing right into his hands. Hmm? Actually... Taka is planning to use her to escape. And he has made you his target. What? Escape? You don't mean... <sighs> Taka is going to try to kill you. What? 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 Indeed. And also he can keep her to himself. <laughs> that, that bastard. Yes. Completely unforgivable! Bastard, 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 bastard! Honestly. Can we allow him con to continue with these barbaric acts? <laughs> Absolutely not. How could I? She. She. I swear I will save her! Yeah. Actually. Then, would you like to join with me? It just so happens I have come up with a plan. Huh? Yeah? <laughs> I have devised a way to reclaim what he has stolen and escape this dreadful school. <laughs> <sighs> and with that, it is complete. Hmm? Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> if Fumi agreed without a second thought, <laughs> the effect that item had on him was remarkable. The power of love... Even a love as twisted as that can still drive people mad, it would seem. Uh, um... You disgust me. I see. I have another question for you. Was that strange costume here for me's creation? Indeed. Yeah, it was a real pain in the butt, too. All I asked him to do was make something to hide the fact and face and general body size. I had no idea he'd make something like that. But it's my fault for picking him in the first place. Oh, you sick... Individual, you meanie. But... So, why'd you decide to make me the suspect? Because you're stupid. Well, that's true. 
audacity. And in that regard, I made the right choice. I'm so glad your stupidity surpassed my every expectation. Oh, God. Life must have been tough on your parents, though. I feel like I could cry. But when you were explaining your plan to Hifumi, how did you explain the part about him playing dead? What she's asking is, what was Hifumi supposed to do after that, assuming you were actually to let him live? Are you okay with this? That's simple. After he did his part and pretended to be dead, once someone showed up, I told him to say he'd been seriously wounded. He was on the verge of death, but he just barely held on. Mm. And he really believed that? <laughs> well, of course. That wasn't all there was to it. As I explained it to him for me, the plan was... While you were all questioning him about what had happened to him, I was going to murder someone else. At that point, he felt he would have had, had an alibi, so nobody could doubt him. I told him that, and he believed it. Hmm. It all seems very straightforward, stereotypical. I just matched the lie to the level of the opponent. In fact, Hifumi ate it up. He believed the lie wholeheartedly, right up until the moment of his death. So in the end... So you had planned to kill him all along. <laughs> but of course. There would have been no point to my plan if the one who pretended to be dead did not end up dead himself. What the heck? How can human life mean so little to you? Well... That's a non-issue. I simply did everything in my power to win. Don't be mean! Now you sound like Biak here. I wonder about that. No, he derives his pleasure from the thrill of the hunt. In that aspect, we are nothing alike. Why? Then, what made you take things this far? Was it really just for money? She's the ultimate gambler, of course, money influences her. Mm. Are you talking about the $10 million Monokuma offered us? That is a lot of money. It's true. <sighs> but that's not all there is to it. From the moment our new life here began, my only thought has been escape. But, but, but all along you've been saying how we have to accept living here. She's a liar. Obviously, that was a lie. Yeah. Hey. I couldn't take it. I hated it from day one. More than anyone, anyone, anyone else in here. You little bitch. I wanted to get out. Every day was fresh torture. And do you want to know why? Huh? This is fine. Because I had a dream. And accepting a life here would have meant nothing less than giving up on my dream forever. And there was no way that I could ever do that. In the underground world of gambling, I risked my life to make, take, make a metaphorical killing. As for me, and it was all for that dream. And what was this dream of yours? Isn't it wonderful? To live in a European castle. Really? So she wanted to burn, earn enough money through gambling, take people's money, to live in a castle? A c castle? Oh god, she wanted a she wanted a whole harm of boy butlers. And to gather handsome men from all over the world to serve as my butlers slash bodyguards. I was going to make them dress up like vampires and satisfy my every need. Jesus. Once I obtained that, I would have created a perfectly aesthetic world of decadence. This is fine. Living the rest of my life there was my only dream, my only goal. That's what life is all about. Holy shit, she has an imagination. <sighs> Combined with my own winnings, Monokuma's $10 million would have made that dream a reality. I got right to the edge, but... There is nothing to be done. Unfortunately, my dream has been scattered to the wind. Still, I don't have any regrets. I pursued my dream till the very end. So why would I? Just the that, that's cold as fuck. You sound so passionate, but you were really able to kill your own friends for it? Are you asking me to feel guilty? That's a pointless endeavor. Like she's robbed people of money. I think nothing of sacrificing others for my own ends. I feel nothing. Do you understand? That's all there is to me. That's what makes me complete. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it terrifying how different our values are? There's simply no room for understanding. What is this? Th that's what we should be saying. And plus, 
How can you be so calm? Don't you realize you're about to die? Why aren't you scared? <laughs> my, ability, my ability to lie is unrivaled, and I take pride in that. So does that mean you actually are scared completely, but you're hiding it well? It's not just other people. I can even fool my own emotions. The conscious deceives the unconscious. And that's why you're not scared? Yes, indeed. That's right. I don't fear death. Kill me however you like. <sighs> but you know, if I could be reincarnated, if I had a choice, then... Isn't it wonderful? I think I would like to come back as Marie Antoinette. Jeez. Hey. You'd just get executed again. <laughs> Celeste smiled then. And when she did, it looked to me like a poor effort to force it. Yeah, she is in, on the inside petrified. She claimed she could f she could fool her own feelings, but that statement itself must have been her final lie. And that weak, fake smile is what betrayed her. Kills, kills, kills! You all done? Okay, then let's get rolling. The black and disturbed the peace, I must pay the price. For her, the ultimate gambler. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. I guess I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. Oh, it's in the AI. What? This is it's a locker key. Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Wow, so she even disguised her, disguised her own voice the whole time. Which is why... Actually, it's not important. Okay, two options. The either the AI has discovered some stuff and Celeste has read it, but she's not willing to tell us before she gets executed. Or... Um, it's found nothing and they're all left. Or perhaps she's destroyed it. Well then, take care, everyone. I guess that's sincere-ish. Perhaps we'll meet again in another life. Damn. She is really scared in real reality. Oh, well, here we go. Goodbye, Celeste. <laughs> Goodbye, Gothic Lolly. <laughs> Celeste has been found guilty. Time for the punishment. So the punishment for the ultimate gambler. Oh, and they gave her the castle anyway. Oh god, there's an army of Monokumas. Burn. <gasps> A witch burning! Wow. That's a slow, painful death. And I'm guessing the rest of the students just have to watch her burn to death. God. Was the fire engine just there as a joke? Yeah, so she was burning to the death and then got crushed by a fire truck. Damn you, Monokuma, that's fucked up. Oh, wow. Uh, there's no reaction by any of them this time. But I guess Celeste was the coldest person so far to commit murder. It's over. The third execution is over. Celeste's death is over. 
Celeste killed my friends, so I can't pity her, but I also can't deny that at one point I considered her a friend too. And for him to just come along and... Isn't it just awful? Someone couldn't cut free of their regrets from the outside world, and so more people had to die. You guys are still young. You need to place more value on your lives. What are you gonna do? Jeez, and here I thought you guys were gonna pass the torch of hope to the next generation. What, what do I care about hope? I'll throw it in the trash if you just let me out of here. Too bad. You're all the embodiment of hope, whether you like it or not. And it's my destiny to knock you down one by one to ultimate despair. It's sad, yes it is, but that reality just can't be avoided. Don't talk like you're not responsible. How long are you going to make us keep going through this? What do you want from us? God, I'm so sick of people asking me that. Give it a rest already. Hmm. So anyway, Kyoko... Did I see you get some kind of key-type object from Celeste? Oh, shit. Hey, hey. So, uh, what's the deal with that? Wow, wow. Huh? What's the matter? So then. I'll answer your question if you answer mine. You. What did you do? What did you do to me? Wait, what the fuck? Ooh. What? Hey. Answer me. What did you do to my body? What the hell? Ooh, how exciting. Oh, oh man, oh jeez, oh man, oh jeez. What do you mean, what did I do? I, I have no idea. I don't know anything about it. Hmm. Uh, um, what was that just now? The mastermind did something to Kyoko's body? What does that mean? Okay, things are getting kind of awkward. I think it's about time I got out of here. Well? Meanwhile, you guys can go on enjoying your school life. If you get lonely, give me a shout. Now that I'll do anything about it, of course. You asshole. See ya later. Bye. Ugh, Monokuma disappeared, leaving us all depressed and in despair. And also, I noticed in the trial we had genocide Jill, and obviously at some point she sneezed and gone back to Toko. Although it wasn't all despair, there was one small hope. Hey, Kyoko, Monokuma already mentioned it, but what's that key that Celeste gave you? I'm guessing it's a locker key. So... Most likely. It's the key to one of the dressing room lockers. Huh? What? Then that means... She never moved it. She just hid it hmm. in another locker or something. Celeste probably hid it in there. Hey. I suppose sometimes it's easiest to miss what's right beneath your nose. Well then, we'd better go check. Indeed. Good idea. We left the courtroom and rushed to the dressing room. As we approached the dressing room... Right, guys. Um, unfortunately, this episode has gone on way too long enough. So, unfortunately, I'm going to call this episode right here. That's all the time I've got for Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc in this time. What an episode. What a trial. And that trial had so many twists and turns that I, I had a feeling it was Celeste from the get-go after everything that had happened. But I wanted to see the evidence to make sure and can convict me correctly. And, jeez, what an execution as well. So, uh, yeah, that was that was an episode. <laughs> um, so, yeah, guys, I hope you're enjoying this game so far and you're enjoying this series and that you enjoyed this episode. If you didn't enjoy this episode, then maybe think about giving it a beautiful big thumbs up. It really helps me out. Also, don't forget to smash the subscribe button on the channel page there so you get um, regular updates from me and you can see all my previous videos and all of the Danganronpa series that I've done so far. Don't forget to hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified of when I post new videos and updates for you guys on the channel and um, let me know down in the comments what you think about this episode and the series so far if you're enjoying it or if you just want to say hi or just to talk about what happened in the episode just go for it guys go wild but no spoilers and just be respectful to each other yeah so we'll continue Danganronpa and find out if the AI is safe in the next episode guys so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video bye